All right, bro, I've been meaning to make this video for a while because I'm tired of people getting these two mixed up. And this is gonna be such a great topic because we're gonna settle this once and for all. Now, I consider myself to be a frugal person, okay? I am not a cheap person. Yet, to the untrained eye, when someone has money and the ability to afford some of the finer things in life, like say a brand new car, a brand new TV, coffee at Starbucks, but decides not to buy these things because their goals are much bigger than a car or a TV, they get called cheap. And where I'm from, those are fighting words, bro. But on a serious note, frugal people understand finances from a long-term perspective, which means they're able to identify when it's time to spend their money and when it's time to cut back and save their money. Cheap people want to save money down to the cent as much as possible, usually by any means necessary, which comes at the expense of others and even themselves. But I'm about to go super in depth on this, so I hope you're ready, bro, because somebody's about to get their feelings hurt. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, getting out of debt, increasing your income, and several personal growth topics so that you can continue to grow yourself every single day. I bring this all the way back to my own personal experiences to serve as a motivation to you. Let's get into the video. The best way for me to break down the difference between being frugal and being cheap is this. Being frugal is incredibly smart. Being cheap is incredibly counterintuitive. Let me explain. A frugal person has a goal and a plan, and their spending and saving behaviors reflect both their short-term and long-term goals. But their goals aren't just about money. Their goals are also set around their relationships, their free time, happiness, and their health. In other words, they base their goals around their core values. So yeah, a frugal person is gonna save a lot of money and they're gonna be very good at it, but they will do so intentionally. And the key difference here is their long-term mindset. A frugal person understands the value behind what they're spending their money on, which means they're willing to spend much more upfront if that means it's gonna save them money and give them value in the long run. And I think I'm a perfect example of that because I used to go out and get my hair cut every two weeks and I would spend $20 each time I got my hair cut. So during quarantine, I decided to order my own barbershop equipment and teach myself how to cut my own hair. The initial cost of all that equipment ended up being about $400, but that ended up saving me time and money in the long run. Let me break it down for you, bro. Paying $20 twice a month, every month for a full year ends up being $480 per year spent on haircuts. The lifespan of the $200 pair of clippers that I got myself is between 10 and 20 years since I'm just cutting my hair every two weeks. So on the very low end of things, I get the minimum of 10 years worth of free haircuts just based off of that expensive investment of that $400 worth of equipment, but that saves me a good $4,800 at the very minimum. Not to mention the fact that it saves me gas going to and from the barbershop every other week. It adds up, bro. That's frugal. And something I value a lot more than just the money that I was able to save is time. When I think about the time it took to drive to the barbershop, wait in line, get my hair cut, then drive back home, I realize that I'm saving hours of time just by giving myself a haircut at home, which frees up time for me to do stuff like work on my YouTube videos or talk to friends or family because those things are extremely important to me. Now I'm gonna tell you about something cheap that I did because I'm not perfect and transparency is key. So a few years ago when I got my first full-time job, I was on a mission to hold on to every single penny I earned. Man, I was ridiculous, bro. <laughs> it got to the point where I was trying to get out of paying for necessities, bro. You know, stuff like oil changes, getting my tires rotated, like, you know, regular car maintenance. And I avoided stuff like that all because I didn't want to spend $80 right then. See, that's the problem with cheap people, bro. They get so caught up in the now that they can't be bothered to shell out a little bit of money right now to such a degree that they'd rather hold off right now than forget about it until later. And then when their car breaks down, they wanna get mad. You see what I'm saying, bro? 
A frugal person straight up will not let that happen. Another cheap thing I did was not going to the dentist or to the doctor even though I had insurance. For one, I felt like I didn't have the time to go and I dismissed it as unimportant because I felt like I was young and healthy. Plus, I just didn't want to pay for whatever my insurance wouldn't cover. Bro, that's the wrong way of thinking. Skip out on getting your teeth professionally cleaned and inspected long enough and I promise you, you will pay the price later. By the time you do go see a dentist, you might have multiple cavities. You might even need to get a root canal done, which means more money that you have to spend in the long run and more pain you have to go through. And the same thing applies with skipping out on going to the doctor's office for a regular checkup. Because you could be walking around with high blood pressure without even realizing it because typically people don't even show symptoms of it anyways. So just think. You go around for years thinking everything is all good, but the whole time you have high blood pressure and you don't even know it. But by this time, it's too late because that high blood pressure is now leading to other health issues. Now you got a lot of medical bills. If only you would have went to the doctor for a simple checkup in the first place, you might not have had this problem. Now, thankfully, none of these things ever happened to me, but these are just the things that I say when I'm chastising myself about mistakes I've made in the past. And of course, it gets a lot more extreme than that. But what I want you to understand is it really only boils down to one thing, mindset. Frugal living is a lifestyle, yes, but a frugal person has a totally different mindset than a cheap person. A frugal person has an abundance mindset, a long-term mindset, and they set their goals around their core values. A cheap person has a scarcity mindset, a short-term mindset, and a set of self-limiting beliefs from which all of their money habits are formed. These two very different mindsets cause each person to act in two completely different ways. For example, a frugal person understands the value of what they're paying for. So whether we're talking about spending money on a trip to go see friends and family, eating healthy foods, or paying to get a really good portrait done. Whether we're talking about tipping a waitress or tipping your hairdresser, or even paying a premium price for a service like tutoring, coaching, home repair, or even car repair. The frugal person will pay the price for these things because they're aware of what value these things bring to their lives. It's a no-brainer for me to spend money on a plane ticket to go visit my friends and family because I cherish the time that I'm able to spend with them. It's a no-brainer for me to tip at least 20% to the waiter or waitress who is serving me at a restaurant when I go out to eat because I know that they're hardworking people who rely heavily on their tips. Plus, I cherish the service that they are giving me, and I love food. And when it comes to paying premium prices for services like coaching or tutoring, I understand the amount of value that that's going to have on my life and what that knowledge and what that skill set is going to do for me in the future. So if it costs hundreds of dollars, fine by me. I know it costs more to eat healthier foods, but I also know that in the long run, it'll lead to a healthier lifestyle, which means less medical expenses. So I'm okay with the fact that it costs more. I'm just not going to go overboard when I go grocery shopping, and that's why I have a budget. These are just a few things that I cherish and value in life, like free time, knowledge, education, food, health, and relationships. So when it comes to spending my money with respect to these things, I'm not going out there saying, nope, that is way too expensive, I'm not buying that. When it comes to being a cheap person, on the other hand, there's really no definite aim or purpose behind saving their money outside of just saving money for the sake of it. This comes at the expense of others, and I think the two biggest things that make a person cheap and really separates what it means to be cheap versus being frugal is selfishness and being counterintuitive. Now, these examples I'm about to give you are just my opinion, so don't trip if you hear something that you disagree with. We're all entitled to our own opinions. I'm a firm believer that you get what you pay for, and anytime you settle for an item that is significantly cheaper than the other options out there, you automatically take a risk of having to replace that item that you just bought much sooner than you actually want to replace it. With that said, I think it's very cheap if you have a budget for $8,000 and you have a choice between getting a $1,000 car and a $6,000 car and you choose the $1,000 car. Not because it's better, not because it's safer, not because it has less mileage, not because it's better on gas, but purely because it's the cheaper option. To me, that's cheap. Why? More opportunities for things to go wrong. 
Like, come on, if a car is cheaper, like $5,000 cheaper, you better believe there's a reason for it. It probably has well over 300,000 miles on it already with a bad engine, dying battery, a bad radiator, a brake pedal that constantly locks up every single time you press it, and multiple oil leaks, not to mention worn tires. You get what you pay for, bro. And stuff like this can obviously lead to safety issues. Like if you get into a car accident because let's say your brake pedal decided to lock up as you were trying to stop the car to stop a collision, but it failed. Okay, the safety features are failing. Let's say as that safety feature fails, let's say the airbags don't engage properly once you make that collision. So now, boom, your car is totaled, you're injured. So now that's a medical bill for you that your insurance probably won't completely cover. And then your car insurance now goes up because of the fact that you've been in a car accident. And because it was your brake pedals that failed, it looks like it was your fault, which only further supports the fact that your car insurance should go up. So now you're injured, your car's totaled, because let's face it, your car was pretty much on the brink of death by the time you bought it for $1,000 anyways and now you have more bills than you wanted. So it really costed you more money in the long run when you spent that $1,000 on that car, which is my whole point when I say that being cheap is counterintuitive. And my point is this, bro. You're looking at a big mess here, but the goal was to save a quick buck though, right? At what cost? Now, for example, let's just say that none of this happens and that was just a really big one-off story that never happens to anybody. Cool. Let's say you still got the $1,000 car. You'll more than likely find yourself spending money on repairs for the car very, very often to the point where you end up putting more money into repairing your $1,000 car than you actually spent on purchasing your $1,000 car. Whereas if you would have just spent a few thousand dollars more on that $6,000 car, which was within your budget anyways, you wouldn't have had to worry about this. Now, how does this come at the expense of others? Easy. You get into a car accident, boom. Whoever you collided with, you're impacting their lives. You have somebody in the car riding with you in a car that doesn't have AC or properly working safety features that can break down at any given moment. That's impacting their lives. Don't be that guy that makes financial decisions at the expense of others. And this is actually a real life example, bro. But you can really apply that logic to just about anything, especially when it comes to technology and furniture, you know, stuff that you actually want to last. Paying that premium price up front can mean that you get that much more longevity and functionality out of them. But Here's a very unpopular opinion of mine that I think should be made popular. And maybe this video will help out, so make sure you share this video, bro. I truly and deeply believe that you are cheap if you have the ability to help others by sending some money. And I'm talking about people that you love and care about, but you refuse to send them money and help them out just because you'd rather hold on to the extra money. Just, just because. And I'm not talking about those who would take advantage of you. I'm not talking about those who don't appreciate you. And I'm not talking about those that you keep loaning money that don't pay you back. I'm talking about the people that you love and appreciate that also love and appreciate you back. That you can send some money to. And it's not about owing anybody anything. It's about being able to give without expecting anything in return. Stuff like that makes you feel good, bro. And the thing is, they might not even need it. But I guarantee you send your mom or your grandma $50 just for no reason. You think it won't make their day? Send your brother or sister $100 for no reason. You, you think it won't make their day, bro? When you give like this, you're operating from an abundance mindset. It says that I have plenty of money, which means I can now give without needing anything in return. And when you do that, it feels good. And you're no longer operating from a scarcity mindset because when you have the extra money, but you decide not to give it, not owing anybody anything, but when you decide not to give it, you're saying, well, I never know when I'll have this much money again, so I'm just gonna hold on to everything selfishly. There's a giving mindset, which is the frugal mindset, and there's a selfish mindset, which is, you know, the cheap mindset. 
All I'm saying is, brothers, nothing wrong with giving family money every once in a while. That's, that's, that's all I'm saying. But that's my two cents. Anyways, man, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.